Hello? Hello, hello, hello? I'm live! It's also like really hot. <laughs> <clears throat> I just noticed how hot it was. <sighs> Anyways, welcome, welcome. What are we going to be working on today? Uh, let me tell you. We're going to be working on the VTuber renderer that I work on a lot of the time. So just wait for it. Ooh, jeez. <laughs> that took a little bit. It took a little bit. Hmm. So let's see. The big thing that we're going to be working on today is just doing a complete revamp of the save system, which is going to be a pretty big effort if I had to guess. So let's see. Which things have changed? Uh, so there's some unit tests that I disabled. Always a good sign. Um, and then some of the resource files got changed. Not sure what happened there, but let's uh, <clears throat> see this git check out. Well, git commit all disable unit tests. You hate to see it. We'll re-enable them once I get around to actually, I guess, re-implementing them. Or I guess, improving the unit tests. Because right now the test coverage for pretty much all of this is pretty garbage. This works. All right, cool. <laughs> Type in my own chat just to make sure that the the chat connection still works for the little overlay. Oh baby. Anyways, let's go. Let's not type into <laughs> stream chat anymore. Let's go get check out a new branch. And then, well, what branches do I actually have right now? Uh. Update Godot VRM is already merged, I think. Git diff. Yeah. Okay, so the readme is a bit different. And then whatever this is. Okay, that's fine. Git branch. Delete update Godot VRM. Alright, so let's get check out. And then this is going to be uh, save file, or I guess it's more of like an app config refactor, since I am a, a more educated person now than I used to be a few months ago, <laughs> hopefully. Maybe not more educated, more experienced is probably the better term. I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily a smarter person than I used to be. I suppose if we're actually looking at the trend, probably a lot less intelligent than I used to be. Since I uh, don't really have to use my brain all that often <laughs> for work anymore. Uh, work is mostly just kind of a a slog.
All right, sorry about that. I was adjusting my earbuds. Okay, so I was on a pseudo road trip today. And so I, during that trip, I kind of planned out how I want the save data to be structured. And now I just need to find, <laughs> where am I loading my save data again? Uh, feature view, no, app manager is probably what we want. Uh, I'm using this as like a signal rebroadcaster, which is pretty, uh, pretty jank. Not gonna lie. Hmm. So this is the config stuff. Uh, what if I just create a new class called like config manager? I think that might be cool. Hmm. Let's see. I think a lot of this stuff can go away. Mm. As part of the big config file refactor, I think I'm also going to um, also change around the UI bits. So this is going to be a combination configuration change uh, in addition to UI update because <clears throat> a lot of things are going to move around because right now if you look at what I'm running which is the the most up-to-date build right we have a few features we have one the model tab the post tab features presets and then app settings whereas I think now it makes more sense to have a know keep the model tab but then kind of fold in a lot of the pose stuff into the model tab as well so then it goes model tracking features presets app settings because mm -hmm. right now in the model tab you can see here that we actually have things that aren't really related to the model just kind of like hanging out here so tracking options bone movement damps these are all face tracker related settings, whereas these pose things are, you know, I guess they make more sense in the model tab. So that's part of what we're going to be reworking. Oh, baby. Uh, so let's see. What does this look like? So we have a, just a bunch of utils. App manager, translation manager, which doesn't really need to exist at this point, I guess, but actually, where do I load in the translation manager, by the way? I don't remember. What the heck? Translation manager? I guess it just doesn't, <laughs> I guess it's just unused. Mm. I don't remember where I'm using it. Duh. Oh, hello, Philippe. Welcome to the stream. I have successfully rolled <laughs> a rubber duck. Or are you talking about this one? How do I squeeze it? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't think I've ever built that functionality into it. Uh, I can change my expression if that would help assuage your your your. Uh, Request. I'm sorry, I can't help you. XD. Oh, I can do that face. Here's the XD face. Anyways. So what I'm working on today is actually this program that you just saw. Uh, gonna be working on redoing the config stuff, which kind of links into a bunch of the UI as well. So right now we have model, pose, feature, view, app settings, yada yada. Mm. And then the config file that stores all your you know presets and tracking options and all that. That stuff uh, was built off of, was built after the fact. 
Now that I know how I want everything to be structured, <laughs> I realize that the current config file thing I have going on is just absolutely garbage. Man, you do lots of stuff, sounds complex. Eh. I... I do a lot of stuff, mostly because I, uh... I don't know. <laughs> get distracted easily. I get bored easily, we should say that. I wouldn't say I get distracted easily. Get bored easily is probably more accurate. So I'm with parallel vectors and there you are making a full VTuber software. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's come a long way since I first started for sure. Actually making everything for your stream. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's fun. It's fun. You know? It sounds like a daunting task. Uh, and I suppose it is a daunting task, but, uh, I don't know, I mean, once you get started, it every, you just kind of naturally break everything down, so it's not as difficult anymore. Something like that. And then once you do something once, then you can reuse it again for your other stuff. Like, I think a lot of the things that I wrote for, you know, this app manager, file that I have open right now, I'm able to reuse it for pretty much all my future projects. For better or worse. <laughs> Alright. Uh, you know, you don't need to learn everything at once. It's learn what you need to and eventually you'll just build up a, a big library of things you know about. Alright, so I'm not doing anything on screen because I actually wrote down how I want to structure the new save file stuff, or config file. Config file, save file, it's the same stuff. Mm. And you can see here that there's actually just like a to do still present in the code. <laughs> I think that's from the first UI revision. And I, I think this actually is not valid anymore. But I don't remember. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Update config, save config, get sidebar config, save load config. Okay, so I have four config stuff. This is tough because <laughs> it's been a very long time since I've messed with the configuration. Oh, uh, as previously stated, this is this is tough. This is tough because uh, I've been like intentionally working around this for a while. Uh, so there's a lot of just garbage. So let's see. In our, I think it's our GUI layer. GUI layer, there we go. I still remember some stuff. So in our GUI layer. Uh, here we go. It's all coming back to me, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I remember this system was pretty good for like toggling on and off different layers. So I probably want to keep that. Mm, here's the properties applied, and this is where it hooks into the config file stuff. Mm. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh no. Wait for that was the update. That's fair for then for I and all of these things, which is pretty much all of them. Yeah. Update config. All right, so when you press the, let me bring this back over here. So when you press the apply properties button, this thing gets called, right? So that's properties applied. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then properties apply. Uh, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute, where does properties applied get called from? <laughs> Apply properties. Um, oh geez. 
Oh man, oh jeez. Oh jeez, Rick. Uh, there's our GUI. This is not the button bar. Is it the system options? Is that where this exists? Yeah. So this is our apply properties button. Apply properties button. Uh, connect press onto this function here. This function here calls this function. Okay, so our GUI layer, no, our system options bar, which is this bottom bar. Oh, jeez, I, <laughs> I hate how I did this. Uh, that function, or that button calls this function here. Our app manager, singleton, which then emits this signal, properties applied. GUI layer connects to that. So what it's doing is it's calling from way inside of the scene tree, back all the way up to the roots, and then back down. So we're, we're, uh, okay, yeah. So basically what this does is it allows me to hook together many signals that are not right next to each other. a kind of like really direct callback system. All right, so on properties applied. So whenever this function's called, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of hard to visualize, I suppose. But basically, whenever you want to hook up signals, you usually need to have just like a very basic, you know, like, Here's our button. We want to connect it to this node here, our root node. That's usually how you would use signals, but in my case, I want to connect this button to something that's not even in this scene tree. And so that's that's kind of why I need to like bounce up to our app manager singleton and then back down to just a random other node. <laughs> and it's also, I guess also, it's, it's very null safe, so it's actually probably closer to like a pub sub system almost. I know, but when I first saw signals, I thought they were plug and play code stuff. Yeah, no, that's, that's visual scripting. I think they, the way they teach it in the docs is like plug and play. Like when you admit everyone can hear, but only the ones with connections can trigger something. It hurts. I like connecting it through the editor. Uh, I feel like connecting it through the editor, I feel like it, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm biased against doing anything that's, like, very visual. And I think another thing about connecting through the editor is that, uh, sometimes you'll want to disconnect from a signal, and then you'll have to do that via code, right? And so if you first connected it through the editor, now you're kind of two layers of indirection deep. So now you've... I, 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 basically what I'm saying is you should pick one system and then stick with it. <laughs> with signals, I don't think it's possible to do both. Gotcha. I never had to disconnect. That's a good point. Yeah. I've had to disconnect a few times, but that's more for like game logic stuff. Yeah, I suppose in this instance I wouldn't. It would be fine to do it through this, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not familiar with how to do this. How does this work? Oh, and also, check this out. I think it's at for what the for what I'm actually using. Uh, the signals for, I actually can't do the, the editor, right, because I have, I can only connect it within this scene tree, unfortunately, whereas what I'm doing here is connecting it through, I'm connecting to just like the app manager singleton, so, how strange. 
I usually do really small games. The biggest thing I did was a bunch of games in one, alternating. Oh, so like a kind of WarioWare sort of thing. I was working on something like that. But this is probably the biggest project I've worked on now. <laughs> My biz my biggest project and also my most uh I guess known project. Uh... Yeah. Godot is really good for small games. Once you start scaling up, I think you, you do need to make a few design choices, decisions. Otherwise it doesn't really scale too too well. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking, here's what I'm thinking, is that we'll do, we'll just create a new script, we'll call it uh, config manager, so we just have a bunch of man manager scripts. So there's our new config manager.gd, cool, we've loaded it here. Uh Okay. Uh I shouldn't touch this now actually. <laughs> Cuz I'm that's, that's a bad habit of mine. So I'm already on a feature branch, which is a I guess professional nerd speak for we're working on something very specific. And since we're working on something very specific, I shouldn't touch other parts of the program. <laughs> Otherwise, it gets hard to track what exactly I'm doing. Okay, so... Where am I? Eh... Is there an app manager? Let's open up config manager. Okay. Good job. Uh... <laughs> And what I meant was, we're going to do this instead. Mm, on ready var, cm, some sort of reference. What I was going to do was take out this class name, because it doesn't really need to exist, since I'm just wrapping all of the, the functions anyways. But we'll do that later. So there's our reference to our config manager. So we have a translation manager, which is uh, more or less a custom rolled translation helper. Like uh, Godot has its own localization stuff, but that's a little complicated. So I, I, I'm trying to avoid using it since it's, I think it's from what I've seen from Godot's localization stuff, it's kind of hard to insert new data into it. So it might be worth migrating over to it for a final release, but right now I'm just gonna use my own custom solution since mine is very, very simple. Okay. So here's what we need to do. There is no ready function. So we're gonna move over a lot of these functions like load config, can be moved to the config manager, update config, save in config, and then get sidebar config safe. Yeah. So let's do load config. Uh, dictionary, huh? Uh, okay, so we'll do like an app manager, log message, begin loading config. So this is our result. All right, so let's see. All right. So this is our stub. Doesn't do anything right now. <laughs> Java style quotes. So to do, uh, fill out. All right, so these are our stubs. Always get to stub things out. Update config. I don't know. Do I like having update config? All it does is just, yeah, 
update config is something that really needs to change. Actually, you know what? Let's just uh, let's type this out here. It's kind of like a, <laughs> a reference for what I'm doing. Or actually, no, let's not even type it out. Let's draw it in paint. Oh, baby. The best mind mapping tool. So here's the new design I'm going to be going with, right? So we have one. This is our metadata file. Metadata. So it's just like a general metadata. Doesn't really matter. Or I guess it's always there, right? And then we'll have separate files for every single uh, model. etc right this is model I don't know, n right and so the flow is we always load in the metadata file first so there's always going to be a metadata file if there's not a metadata file then we create a metadata file and then whenever you load in a new model then I'll create a new save file. And that uh, save file is based off of the file path. Mm. So the metadata file tracks your other files. So you can think of it like this. Let's move this over here. So you have something like ba, ba, ba. Bah. So the me metadata file tracks the other files. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then these are all like, relative, absolute paths, not relative paths, absolute. Absolute paths. But these are still separate files. Mm -hmm. And then the metadata file, what does it contain? It contains a default model to load. So which one of these it should load in as a default. And if there is no default, then load in this duck model. Since I provide this duck, more or less free of charge. Uh, there is no, hmm, there, there is no license on it. So technically you cannot use it commercially, but <laughs> that's fine. It's more or less for demonstration purposes. Hmm. And then inside of each of these models, so let me see if I can do like a, like a blown up view of what's inside. Oh baby, he, he knows how to do graphics. Um, we're going to have a few fields, so there's going to be just a second metadata kind of slot. Um, there's going to be model stuff. Hmm. Yeah, model, face tracking, and then features. Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And then this will just have default model to load, default model search path. Um, that's really it. What other things should be here? Um, I don't know. What other things would you want to put in your app specific metadata? I was, I was just thinking of something 
while I was kind of reading off this, my handwritten notes. But now that I've finished reading the handwritten notes, but didn't actually mention what I was thinking about, I've completely lost track of where I am in terms of <laughs> rational thought. Um, hold on, we can do this. Oh, if we should use, well, yeah, should use absolute, or no, should use portable uh, save file, config files, 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 i.e. absolute paths versus relative paths, paths, paths. Yep. So that's what's inside of there. And then here, this is, let me see, move this down. Hmm. So notes, screenshots, anti-aliasing. I actually don't know what I'm gonna put in the metadata field. But model is pretty easy. We're just gonna move all the existing model stuff to, to model. So if we go back to here, you can see here is that model, of course, is gonna go into model. And then everything in pose is also going to go into model. I'm gonna take out all of this stuff and then move it to the new face tracking uh, field. I think that makes sense. So existing model. Fields, pose fields. And then this is more like damps. Damps, interpolation, etc. Right? Yeah. I'm just going to leave that comma on the very end. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm doing. And then this is gonna be props and I guess display options. I don't know what display options means, but that's in my notes. All right, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> it's beautiful. Let's move the duck over here. This is what I'm building out. This is not actually how the current save file works. The current save file is just a big mega save file. So, you know, oh boy. Gotta hate it. Hmm. So let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's update config. I need to have this like pasted somewhere. Oh. I don't know why I always do this. Oh geez. Let's open up paint.net. <laughs> and then paste that into here. It's a new, whatever this is, paste. It's beautiful. Okay, get out of here, paint. Okay, so load config. What we want this to do is load the metadata and then if necessary, load in the default model. Okay. So why does load config load in a dictionary? <laughs> I actually don't know if load config should load in a dictionary. I don't remember why. Why does load config load in a dictionary? Is this used in GUI layer? Uh, all right. Let's go to model view. So, let's see, generate properties, no, but it's like on, yeah, setup, right. Config, huh. Wait, no, these, yeah, so each view just gets past a dictionary, so they don't actually load in. Where do I do all the loading then? Why is this returning a, Oh no. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Load config. Oh. Oh. 
Okay, so that's why it's loading in a dictionary. Or it returns a dictionary. Is that I set it equal to this kind of global app config here in the app manager. However, I think I can change that. So I don't need this. This is now a void return. And so, yeah, it should be this. We should have a few functions now. This is um, load metadata. So load metadata. <laughs> so var metadata file. Or no, metadata config, which is some sort of dictionary. Okay. And then a var current model config, which is separate. How does that sound? I think that allows me to implement this structure here. So you always have a metadata file. That stays constant. These do not stay constant. Okay. And config for something. Load config. And then this needs to be some sort of path. Right? All right. I'm done drinking my energy drink. Like the complete degenerate I am. Ugh. I was very tired today because I didn't have my coffee in the morning. Uh, went on a road trip. My, uh, my brother's birthday was uh, celebrated today. So did a lot of sleeping in the car. We went up to, to visit him. Anyways. And actually, that doesn't make any sense as to why I would be sleepy after that. Uh, what, you, you ever know, like, when you sleep too much, you actually feel a lot more tired? Does that happen to you as well? That happens to me a lot. In loading metadata. All right, so we can steal a lot of the functionality here. So var file path, we can have a default metadata directory. And it should really be, hmm. Yeah, I think it's, I think I can move a lot of this save stuff out of the app manager and into the config manager. Yeah. So save directory path, I actually set that here. So func and knit. If not, OS is a debug build. Do a thing, otherwise, do another thing. Ha ha ha. So var metadata path, which is some sort of string. All right, so metadata path. This. Metadata path is equal to this. Otherwise, metadata is equal to the export directory, my favorite directory to just slap things into. Uh, that's weird. Why isn't there a space here? Did I accidentally? No, I didn't accidentally take out the space. There was just, <laughs> just no space there. I must have missed that on one of my refactor passes. So metadata path. Uh, let's see. Get current model is current model. Uh, oh, th this is added. Oh, this is one of the. <laughs> so this is some of the code added by 
an external contributor. Someone else. That's why I didn't recognize it. I started looking at it. I was like, what, what am I looking at? <laughs> Loading config. Okay, so we have our file path. Wait. So we construct it along with the save file name. All right, so we can move that over as well, probably. So app config .json. Um, you know, since we're already uh, refactoring this, something else I would like to do is use a kind of custom format. Since JSON is actually a little difficult to work with since these files are so big. Actually, you know what? The metadata should probably be JSON. And then the, yeah, yeah, the metadata should be JSON. And then these should probably be a binary format so that they're a bit smaller. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then this one should also be... Oh, it's so small. Um, should pack mm, model inside of config file. I don't know. <laughs> I think that makes sense as well. So let me think. Let's add a, a doc string here to the metadata config. Metadata config. And just to reiterate, this is what it contains. I think a, a big failing of this, my current config file solution, is that I didn't... <laughs> there's just no documentation on how I <laughs> structured it initially, which makes it a bit difficult to maintain. Although I'm wondering now if it's, since it's so difficult to maintain right now, hmm. What if I did, so like, like instead of using a dictionary, what if, <laughs> hear me out here, what if I create a bunch of inner classes? Oh no, he's beginning to, <laughs> he's beginning to believe. Class metadata config. Oh no. Yeah, I think yeah that that's probably a better solution as opposed to using dictionaries, right? So the reason why I think this is that dictionaries don't really have a structure to them. They can be they can be structured. They can hold data however you want, right? Whereas with a class, you have to follow that structure. Otherwise, the program will throw an error. So yeah, that's it's basically like the Java style solution on how to do object management. That's fine though, that's fine. Yeah, this is now a metadata config. And then here we'll do class uh, current model config yeah okay I've convinced myself to go with this kind of weird solution all right let's call this metadata actually <laughs> since we're already breaking a bunch of compatibility, And then we can, let's see, funk, uh, let's do like a, just like an export. Mm. Oh no, to JSON probably. Mm. Actually, yeah, it should return a string. Mm. 
So how do you introspect? Well, we don't actually want to introspect on it. We want to... Hmm. Okay, save to JSON, and then load from JSON. Load to JSON. Load from JSON, not load to JSON. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Load from JSON. So metadata is a JSON file, which means that this takes a JSON string, some sort of string, void return, yeah, like so. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then let's start populating the class members. So this is, let's see, we have, what did I say I was gonna have? <laughs> Default model. So it's, Default load path. Hey. Hey. What did what what did I what what is it currently set as? Just default model? Okay. Get default model pass. Okay, so it is a Alright, it's it's no longer default model, right? It's more of a default config. Eh. Eh. So what are, what are these? These so this is metadata. Are these config files or are these model files? These are config files. So let's see default config path. Well, we'll just call it default config, right? And of course, this has to be some sort of string. May or may not be set. Hard to say. Um, default config, and then default model, search path, default, search path, default, search path, some sort of string. Actually, it's not some sort of string. We set it to this value here. Actually, it should be OS executable path base directory. Uh, I think it should be. Or what if I do? Uh, uh, what am I doing? Let's see. Default search path. So on init, default search path, we set it equal to just kind of the. No, I don't think I can do that. I think that's not. I don't think that's valid, actually. <laughs> I don't think that's valid. Default search path. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think you can do that. <laughs> That doesn't feel like valid, like any kind of code, because you're you're kind of dirtying like this kind of inner context with the outer context. But maybe that's fine. That that feels really wrong to me though. Metadata path, which is some sort of string. All right, I think this is this is better. Anyways, should use portable config files. Var should use portable config files, which is eh, some sort of boolean, which is what's set equal to false. Actually, so in the JSON spec, how does this work? <laughs> How does how does JSON do booleans? JSON boolean. JSON w, data types. I forget how boolean works. JSON booleans. Okay, JSON booleans are just like that. Okay. So that's fine. JSON doesn't have integers, JSON only has um what's 
So load from JSON. That'll give us our metadata. And then we can do... Uh, var JSON data is equal to parse JSON JSON string. So for parse JSON, that gives you some sort of variance. Parses text to a variance, and that could either be a dictionary or a an array. So we can do a quick type check here. So if JSON data is it how do they do it? It was type of type of type of does not equal type dictionary. Then we want to do like an app manager log message invalid metadata loaded aborting or using default metadata values. Okay. <laughs> and so then default config will be equal to JSON data mm. default config. default search path is JSON data default search path and then should use portable config files is equal to JSON data should use portable config files yeah look at that hey check out my channel I sh mm. so no by offsec I feel like I've seen you before <laughs> but I, I, it's a little in poor taste to just come in and then just you know, pimp your channel. But you're lucky. You are following me. <laughs> you're lucky. I will. I will leave your message up, and then also at the same time update my <laughs> chat rules. No advertising. Let me see. How do I? How do you update chat rules? Uh, let me see. Is it in stream or channel? Uh, Udeme, por favor. Channel. Let me see. Moderation. No advertising. Isn't it weird? Advertising is spelled with an S in American English, isn't it? I don't remember. Alright. Let me see. We're going to delete that message, though, for sure. I can find out how to. <laughs> or I'll just leave it there. Why not? Save to JSON. We'll do the same thing. Or it's not really saving to JSON, but it's uh, save to JSON string. So we'll do. I suppose it's just JSON, huh? Save to JSON gives you back a dictionary. And then we'll just return a new dictionary containing default config, which has your default config inside of it. A default search path, which of course has your default search path. 
And finally, should use portable config files. Should use portable config files. Oh baby. There we go. Talk a little bit. Wonder, how do you do? You can iterate over a class and get its methods. How do you do that in Godot? Godot, iterate over class uh, fields. How do I? How do you iterate members of a class? Hmm. Get property list. That's probably not what I want. Because there's a lot of random properties on the class. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. This is good enough. And our current model data. Let's start filling that out as well. So we'll have a model field, face tracking field, features field, and then just additional metadata field. I wonder, can you have additional inner classes on a class? Class. Uh. Metadata. Or will I get angry? <laughs> it does. Okay, it does get angry. Model metadata. Uh. Yeah, I might not need metadata actually. Current model data. I think we're just gonna create all the classes in the same scope and then I'll just assign them to the current model data. So then we can have class, model, model data, Class face tracking data. And then finally, features. Feature data. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I totally left off presets as well. Where do presets go? Presets should go on. Hmm, probably just regular metadata, huh? Yeah, should probably just go on regular metadata. Preset. Okay, so that, that changes a lot of things. How do you store presets on a just kind of a global level? Right, because the, the idea here is that you don't need to load in a model. Or you shouldn't have to load in a model, then load in the model preset. You should just be able to load in a preset independent of whatever model. So you can kind of quickly flip between different models that are in like different poses or whatever. Hmm. I don't know. Presets. Presets, which will be, let's see, var presets, some sort of array. We'll initialize it like so. Load from JSON. And I can more or less guarantee that there will always be, a, like these fields will always be here, right? Because I'm constructing it like this, basically completely <laughs> directly. So, yeah, yeah, I can guarantee this, at least. At the very least. Which is nice. Uh...
Let me see. Hmm. Presets. Load from presets. Or load from JSON. Presets will equal JSON data. Presets. Okay. That makes sense. And then each preset will have some sort of data that's actually not even documented here, which is a little unfortunate. Hmm. Oh no. So how presets actually work currently is that they are just a copy of like these fields here. <laughs> uh, Oh no. Okay. So the, okay. So I've I've already poked a hole in my current implementation. It doesn't make a lot of sense to put presets inside of the metadata field. Presets are more just like model paths. Uh, huh. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. I thought I had it all planned out. As it turns out, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Huh. And also, I forgot to put in, I guess, just model data. <laughs> so your metadata should contain references to your I guess just model configs. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking. <laughs> Everyone shut up, I'm thinking. Um. <laughs> What if I don't, what, what if we don't have presets? What if we don't have presets? Can we take our presets? Boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. Okay. And so this is actually just like model configs, model configs, model config paths. And so model config paths Config paths are just presets, so I, I treat each model config as its own preset. Hmm. Put a QQ oh. hover. What? <laughs> Cenobite Tomo block no message. MSG. Sorry. I'm not sure, but uh, apology accepted. I'm not, not sure what that means, but okay. I was at a Bra Brazilian stream. Came back in Portuguese mode. Nice. Very good. Uh. It's good to know that you multi-stream. Gotta share the, the viewer love. Actually, that sounds gross. <laughs> viewer love. Hmm. I'm still kind of stuck on how to structure this, right? Hmm. Because you have all types of paths. Hmm. Huh. Model config paths, and then I should store. Hmm. I was asking what the heck happened. Cenobite got block on it. That's a translation, not litter, but nah. I got you. I got you. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. I, uh. I didn't block them. Uh, I couldn't find a way to remove their comment, so instead I just timed them out and then 
untime them out. Sorry for the cursing, Ed. Not a big deal. I generally try to avoid cursing on stream, but you know, if you want to curse in chat, that's totally fine with me. Since, you know, I, I kind of treat streaming as like just practice for... Practice for like actual work. <laughs> So like during work I do, or for professionally, for pre yeah, professionally I should say, I do a lot of software demos, or just you know, lots of client facing work. So I try to, it's pretty much what I'm doing now, except you know I get paid real money to do that. So <laughs> can't curse during those. So Cenobite says something rude. Uh, they just like. You know, drop their channel, like advertise their channel in chat, which is a kind of a weird energy. It's kind of weird, considering that one, there's no one here, <laughs> and two, it's like I don't know. Are you advertising your own stream inside of someone else's stream? Question mark. Yeah, it's just it's just weird. I know this account. Oof. Yeah, well, I guess I can't be too mad since it wasn't in the, the chat rules to to not advertise your own channel, but... Uh, model config paths. Yeah, it's rude to do that without even asking. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's like the, the biggest thing. It's just weird. Very kind of rude. <laughs> I suppose part of it's on me though, because I didn't specifically say you couldn't do that. I just kind of assumed it was understood not to do that, but you know, just like they say, you know, don't don't touch or like don't don't start a microwave with your <laughs> self inside of it. You know, it's it's you assumed it's common sense, but uh, someone's done it before. So let's see. Metadata paths. Oh, that's tough, man. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. Um. Okay, so. Here we go. What if we do it like this? So we have a list of presets, var presets, which is actually a dictionary. Okay. And there's a sign saying, don't lick the plastic while it's decorative. <laughs> it's because someone did it. Oh yeah, definitely. 100%. Well, I think it's because someone's done it and then someone got mad about it. <laughs> and so they decided to stop it. It's not that people were doing it. It's probably because people were doing it and then getting mad that it wasn't a real lollipop. <laughs> um, so presets and then var. That's not var, var model defaults, which is a second dictionary. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. I'm glad that I'm making sense to you. Model defaults. So, okay, okay. So here's how we're going to do it. So, metadata file contains a list of presets. Uh, for each model path, or I suppose for each model name, and then model or default presets for each model name. Yes. Actually, hold on. Ooh. 
Was it hard to make the API config use chat messages in your stream avarts? Avarts? Stream overlay? It wasn't very hard. I can walk through it if you want me to. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you trying to set up my software? Or are you trying to make your own implementation? Yeah. If you want, I can run through it. Stream avatars. Uh, so, I mean, this is custom, so it's not <laughs> super difficult. You know, I can I can open it up now if you would like to to see. Yeah, so like, yeah, why why not? Let's open it up right now. So how this works is. So this is Friendly Potato Stream. That's the, the stream avatar thing that you're talking about. Um, oh, that's not it. It's this thing here. Yeah, so this is the Godot object. We have a chat bubble that dynamically resizes itself. Um, so I guess, are you talking about like the Twitch API? Or are you talking about like the Godot API? Because there's a few things I can go over if you would like me to explain. Yeah, because there's, there's a few things, right? So you need to connect to the Twitch chat URL using a bunch of API keys. You can kind of see the format here. Uh, let me see. It's one of these things. I've seen it before. Ah, oh, geez. <laughs> Where do, when do I set this up? I forget. The integration be between Godot and Twitch. So Twitch chat, uh, the Twitch chat integration, not too bad. Not too bad. Let me see. Oh, it's in main. Yeah, so this is kind of the, the flow. So you just need to authenticate. So Twitch integration. Yeah, so if you look at my code, and let me drop a link into chat if you would like to follow along for yourself, friendly potato stream. It's available under MIT license, so you can just use whatever you want. If you take code directly from it, then you know I would recommend dropping the uh, dropping the license into like your licenses folder. But you can follow along for yourself. This is inside of main screen, which is inside of uh, screens. <laughs> so main screen, and then also utils, which is inside of service integrations. Oh. And then Twitch integration. YouTube integration is not yet set up since I've, <laughs> I've never actually streamed on YouTube. But they do have an API. So. I mean, just kind of follow along from, I guess this line 85, right? Load Twitch chat base. Here's the Twitch chat API. So you authenticate, wait for the signal to come back, and then you need to join your own Twitch channel in order to listen to chat messages. And then after that, service join channel. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Join channel, chat client, get peer set right mode. This one, and then, okay, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's using just a bunch of the Twitch IRC commands in order to join your channel. And then it has a little WebSocket thing set up. Yeah. So line 152 inside of twitchintegration.gd. That's the main kind of listener for Twitch chat messages. Um, and then you can see here that I'm actually calling a separate function here, add message to chat history. So I am actually logging uh, chat messages. Uh, they don't get stored. I don't remember why I made that decision, but that's just how it works. 
since Twitch chat messages don't actually come as just regular strings, they come as like IRC strings. So they come, it's like your name, exclamation mark, your name, pound sign, the, the channel name, and then a few other characters before it actually gets to the real chat message. So that's, it's doing a, a you know, some parsing here. And then emit to signal. Chat message received, stripped user, stripped message. Yeah. So basically, if what you're looking for is how to uh, integrate with Twitch, it's main screen, this part here, follow along those functions. And then the final exit point for your message is line 325. It's amazing I never did something integrated with Twitch. Yeah, the Twitch chat API, not too bad. Not too bad. The Twitch pub sub API, which is this one right here, is kind of garbage. <laughs> but you can also look at the code in there. Uh, all the code is just included. Pub sub data received. Oh, look at this. I actually left myself a note as well. But yeah, that, that's how that works. Don't save. Yeah, I, it should just work more or less. You do need to create your own um, save file, config file. You know something to invite people as guests to repos? It should be a public repo, right? Is it not public? Can you not see it? I, I'm not. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you not have access to it? Like a link? What, what do you... What do you mean? What do you mean a guest to your repo? I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> so like you can clone it, right? So you just go to HTTPS and then, you know, hit it with a git clone with that URL. So it'd be something like git clone like that, right? Uh, are you asking to join my <laughs> Discord server? Uh, that is in my description below. Yeah. So, but that, that, yeah, that's how you grab the code from there, right? You need to have a Git client. Click on this code here, or I suppose you could just download as a zip. I was asking if in a private one you could invite people. I think I'm in your server. Oh, okay, well, there we go. I think that solves, that answers your question, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure what a guest to a repo is. Um, but I, I think that should answer your question, I think. I'm there now, oh baby. Always appreciated. Presets will equal JSON data. Oh no. I'm in there now. I wasn't showing <laughs> me. Oh. Welcome to the, the Discord server. You made that duck. Ah. Uh, Only got a green. Only got a green. <laughs> What's up, Nat? I was just wondering though, the whole how to be a guest in a repo was not related to the public MIT repo. I'm, I still don't really understand what that means. <laughs> I, I would love to answer your question. I just don't understand it. Uh, so I don't, I'm not sure what guest to a repo means. That's That's the biggest thing. <laughs> I was just like, if I had a private repo and then I wanted someone to only clone view the source, I wanted someone to go back. Oh, if you had a private repo, I see. If you had a private repo, how do you grant people access? Okay, well, we can look at 
I don't know. What, what's something I don't really care about? Eh. Uh, eh. Uh, probably this one, right? Are you. Well. So if I do this, you can manage access. Ooh, don't type my password on stream. <laughs> manage access. We'll bring it back. And then only those. Yeah, let's see. Inv I think you can just invite a collaborator, right? So I think. I have no idea who this. <laughs> Wait, what is Nox's username? I know Nox has a. Yeah, there we go. So that, that's how you would do it. So you go to settings and then invite a collaborator to your private repo. I think that's how you do it. I've never really done it before. Yep. Is there a way to make a link to anyone who cook it into the repo? I don't think so. You could probably Google it. Right. Like I'm not sure why. <laughs> Oh, and not be able to push to main? I have no idea. <laughs> How does this work? Uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a pro feature, maybe? I, I don't know. <laughs> I think if, I think if you're at the point where anyone who has the link can access it. Uh, I think you might as well just make it a public repo, right? Because isn't that, that's basically the same thing, right? <laughs> the only difference is that it's not searchable by a, like a search engine, so you can't Google it. I think that's the biggest difference. Right, because if people have the link to your repo, then they can just look at it, right? Uh, and that's kind of what you're asking for. And then I'm not, isn't that the same thing as just having a public repo at that point? That's not indexed on Google. Hmm. Yeah, but I have a very specific need. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm not aware <laughs> of a feature like that. I think you would have to Oh, uh, you know what? Doesn't GitHub has its own API, right? Yeah. I think you would have to create your own plugin. <laughs> it's just so I I can have a certain Discord Telegram people have access to it. Looking at branch protection rules, it seems like a pro feature. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. The the closest thing I can think of is that you would have to set up your own kind of REST API thing. Uh, if you wanted to have something work like you describe it, right? So you would provide a link, they click through it, it runs through your application, your application grants them the appropriate access. Without having to know their accounts and manually do it. Now if I want you to do it, GitHub has to reject it. Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> It sounds like something that you could write like an API wrapper around using GitHub's API, but honestly, I haven't dug too much into it. Class presets, funk. Well, I think just presets is enough and then model defaults is just a uh, a mapping of strings to strings, right? String to string. That's the hard part. This is the hard part. No repo with the same source and receiving the same pushes. I don't... Hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll let you answer that knock. That sounds complicated though. Hmm. Okay, so presets. So going back to this structure. Uh, so by the way, not what I'm working on is I'm reworking the entire save data system. 
And here's also another idea. I, I kind of had just kind of randomly popped into my head. Is this. I think it's this one. Is it stegano? Isn't it rust steganography? Or is it, is it this one? Hmm. Is it this one? It might be. Yeah. So, here we go, right? Some metadata. This is basically just JSON, and then I parse it into kind of like Java style into this kind of class, right? However, for these model specific config files, I use a Rust uh, steganography, ste stega, steg, stegan, steganang. How do you how do you pronounce this word, by the way? <laughs> steg, steganography, ste, ste, steganography. Can I can I can I have a pronunciation Google? Steganography. Steganography. Ah. Uh. Uh, yeah, so Philippe, I think, I feel like if you were willing to put in like, like actually, I think it would actually be a lot of work, but if you wanted whatever feature you're talking about, I think you could use GitHub's API. You would just have to kind of look around in it. Uh, just have Git GitLab had it for free, why not use GitLab? Oh yeah, so you know what you could do? is um, you keep your main repo on GitHub, if you want to keep it on GitHub, of course. And then if you set up a mirror repo on GitLab. So you're kind of mixing the two and you're using Nox's idea of using a mirror repo. So you, you, know, you push to your main repo on GitHub and then also push to your mirror. And then your mirror has that functionality to generate a, like a view link. Mm. And that, so that way you get to use GitHub features and also have whatever your use case is with having anonymous accounts look at your code if they have the URL, right? Steganography. You can also set up GitHub actions to automatically push the mirror. Oh baby. Yeah. But here's the idea. This metadata, all JSON, these specific metadata files are just a PNG screenshot of whatever you have and it will use some steganography to hide all this data inside of that screenshot. What do you think? <laughs> and then depending on your portability config rules, we can also, we can either use just a path to your uh, a path to your file, or the entire model data can be encoded in your PNG. I think that would be pretty cool. <laughs> and also very complicated, but it would also kind of solve my problem of like needing to store data not as JSON, because right now everything is stored as JSON, which is a bit tough. They have a way to have guests for free. People can look on some pull requests but not push. Isn't that just what a normal public repo is? Well, I suppose you want a semi-public. Uh, why is JSON bad? So JSON is bad. Uh, I'm not actually sure why. <laughs> I think I think the JSON format is bad because. I think it just gets too big, so there's not really a real reason to see it, you know? That's basically the biggest thing, is that it's, it's, it gets really big and inconvenient. And there's not a real reason to expose it to the user. If you're not sure why, I don't think you can say it's bad. Uh, it's bad because it feels bad. <laughs> 
If it gets big, that's your fault. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what I'm saying. Is it's big. It's too big, and there's not too much I can do to shrink it. Because right, there's a lot of words, a lot of data that I'm saving. So it, I don't know. I think the bin saving saving it in a binary format would probably be better. That's basically it. Split them up. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the idea here. And that's where I got the idea for doing some steganography. So it's it's neat. We save your data as a PNG. How would that help? Binary would also get big. Yeah, but this way, you have a PNG of whatever your preset looks like. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's useful or not, but I like the idea of it. And that's why I'm doing it. Uh, that's that's kind of my, you know, reason for doing a lot of things is because the idea of doing it sounded fun. Oh, and actually, presets doesn't need to be its own thing. Just use use JSON plus JPEGs inside of a zip file. No. Well, I think the problem with using a zip file is um, that I would need to have... I don't think Godot has built-in zip unzipping capabilities. Yeah. I don't think I can unzip things from Godot. Many formats already do it anyways. Yeah. Probably true. JSON plus JPEGs. We're gonna use a PNG. <laughs> Otherwise, I think I would need to have like a different. I would need to look up like a probably like a Rust zip library. How does this work? Is this is this the good one? Zip RS. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about finding a zip file versus writing your own binary format. Well, I think the the idea here is that. If this works how I think it works, encode, yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm already doing my own uh, binary format, right? More or less, because it's already just JSON, and then I can encode all these pieces of data into just binary format, right? That's not so bad. And then I decode it in the same way. And the biggest change from how I used to be doing uh, config file stuff is that uh, I'm just going full Java with it. <laughs> so instead of having everything just be a dictionary, now I'm just creating model classes. So, you know, create my own binary format just so I can insert it into a PNG image. Doesn't sound so bad. Full of Java, you never go full of Java. You know, I was full of Java for uh, a few years. <laughs> Sometimes I miss it. Sometimes I miss it. I miss having the structure of Java code. So presets. I feel like presets should just be... Yeah, this actually shouldn't be presets, right? Hmm. So get rid of this class. Boom. This isn't really a preset, this is just model data. Model data. Which is a dictionary of... Hey, 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 hey. So you're gonna have 50 class deep class hierarchy then? Ah, I think it's only going to be... So you have the metadata file here. This metadata file contains references to, uh, I guess, JSONified, or it might not even be J JSON. It might just be, hmm. actually, yeah. It's a string to string model data stored as a string to string. Hmm. 
Yeah, so this points to, model data points to, hmm, hold on, I'm thinking. Model data, model data default, Mo or model, model, yeah, model data defaults, yeah. Points to specific model data for a model name. Yeah! So it's not very deep, right? So you have this mega metadata file, or not mega, right? But all this does is it points to different, or it keeps, a tr it keeps track of different model datas. So model one, model two, model, you know, n. Uh, and then this one keeps track of model data defaults based off of your model name. It'll load in specific model data, right? So it's really only one, two, Three. Three layers deep. It's only three layers deep, so it's not bad. <laughs> it's like it's like a better Java implementation. AKA what I've been doing with Groovy code. So your current model data. So not Java at all. Well it depends on how you uh how your tech lead recommended you do Java. I saw no inheritance. Uh you know what, that's probably true. <laughs> Well, there's, there's not really too much inheritance to do. We are just composing. Uh, actually, we aren't composing. So metadata doesn't, doesn't contain any current model datas. Uh, just wait. Why is current? Huh? Model config, face tracking config, feature config. Then this is just model data. Where do the images fit in? So, the images fit in like so. We're gonna have a stubbed function called uh, two, uh, two bytes, I suppose. <laughs> Or two, yeah, two byte array. Pool byte array. <laughs> and then this will return just a bunch of bytes. And then the images fit in because now that I have bytes, I use this library via GD native steno ste steganography encoder, uh, create a new encoder with a buffer to write and an image to write it to. This just needs a buffer. Oh baby. We're probably, we're gonna, mm. yeah. Encodes the buffer into the Apple channel of the destination image. I think, yeah, that, that, see that makes sense I think, right? So I'll do something like Godot, in Godot, I'll get get viewports, get texture, get texture data, pass that image over to Rust, and then also pass just this config file data over to Rust. Rust will encode these uh, these bytes into the alpha channel of that image, uh, and that's that's your save file, uh, just like that. I think that makes sense. <laughs> I think that makes sense. Pool byte array. Oh, hello, dead sec. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that luck. Hit it with the... The four ducks. And then was granted a duck avatar. And to answer your question, knock, 
Uh, I'm doing it because it seemed interesting. Is that the secret I must duck emote on entry? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, the code is open source, so you can see that I'm actually I'm I'm actually just rolling a random number. <laughs> Or is it? Am I using a custom build? That searches for if the uh, if the if your avatar doesn't exist yet, and your first message is a duck emote. Hmm. Can I PR? <laughs> that sounds gross. Please, please don't PR in chat. <laughs> Ban for lewdness. Uh, PR, pulling your Ricky, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, see the secret, can I PR? Well, I, I guess if you want to, I won't, <laughs> I make no guarantees about accepting your PR, but if you want to, you can. Yeah, the code, the, the repo is, let me actually find the repo again. Let's do it. It's, uh... So if you want to submit a PR, then by all means. And then it's just inside of screens, screen plugins, chat minions, uh, probably chat minions.gd. And then here I just do the uh, existing minion check. And so it's somewhere from line 78 to line 85 that you'll have to... You'll have to think about it. <laughs> Hopefully your implementation does not completely screw it up. Yeah. Somewhere from here to here. You'll want to insert that code, I guess. Hello, hello, hello. But yeah, what I'm working on right now, that sec, is this application here. So I'm rewriting the entire save system since the entire save system is extremely fragile uh, and prone to breakage. <laughs> and so what better thing to do when working with a system that is prone to breakage by completely rewriting it <laughs> and replacing it with something that is even more fragile. That sounds exciting to me. Uh, so to do method stub. So what I'm thinking right now, I think the metadata portion is complete. More or less. So you have your model data. Mm, and this is just, uh, was it config name to config path, I, su I guess. And then this one is model name to config name. Yo, redeeming those <laughs> channel points for something that's actually useful. I think I can do that too. Modify a single emote. Let me see. I think I think I'm doing it. <laughs> All right, so model data, uh, model data is just a, a dictionary of string to string, so that should be pretty easy. Model data, model data, amazing. Who would have guessed? And then model defaults is also just a string to string, so JSON data model defaults and then we'll do something similar 
There must be a better way of doing this, but I'm not aware of what it is. Model data. Model default. Model default. Like so. All right, so metadata, completely fine. On load metadata, we'll do metadata path. File path is equal to whatever this is. Dun, dun. Metadata path. And then we need like a metadata file name. Fonts metadata name some sort of string, and then we'll set it equal to app, well, app config.json, right, because it makes it really easy, and also extremely compatible, more or less. Actually, no, it doesn't make it extremely compatible either way, but, ugh. Set file to load. No, load config. This is what we want. Um, var directory is equal to. I'm, co I'm just copying my code from the old one. Let me see if file exists. Well, I'm not copying pasting it directly, because there's some things I want to take out. Hmm. Bar metadata. Is metadata just the... Metadata is fine. Metadata file is equal to file new metadata file dot open file path and we're only going to read from it I suppose okay huh hmm bar JSON data is equal to parse json eh, metadata file get as text right because remember our metadata file in this kind of uh kind of structure here our metadata file is going to be json uh and then the actual model files are going to be binary or going to be in binary format. Mm -hmm. Then we can do a a type of check. Fairly easy if type of JSON data. Actually, wait a minute. Oh, I can just create a metadata file. Yeah, I actually don't need to do this. Yeah. Let's do var metadata is equal to metadata new. Oh, and then we need to insert hey metadata path. I think that's fine. Metadata path. Metadata path. Default search path. Hmm. Why am I doing it like that? Yeah, actually, this doesn't need to exist. Yeah. Huh? Default search path? What was I thinking at the time? This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Default config. 
I think still maps to something I have right now. Yeah, I don't I don't know what this is. What was I thinking here? <laughs> Metadata path is not used. Default search path is slightly different. Yeah. Now your metadata path cannot change. Your metadata path must be there. Yeah, I'm not sure what I was thinking here. It's one of the things I was probably talking on autopilot, but then started thinking more about what I was saying as opposed to like actually programming, unfortunately. I try to avoid doing that. You know, sometimes just get really engrossed uh, in whatever I'm saying. All right, so metadata is our kind of, you know, think of it as a pojo. It would be a pogo, plain old Godot object, oh baby. So this is our pogo. We get the metadata file, get as text, should be uh, valid, I suppose. Um, and yeah, I think that's fine. Metadata load from JSON. Metadata, well, actually, metadata, metadata config. Yeah, actually, we can do this. Metadata config is equal to metadata config load for JSON. Metadata file get as text. Um, and that's it. Yeah. And then we can also have this return a bool. So we can do return false and then return true. Right. Just to signify if we successfully loaded. So we do if metadata config load from JSON. Or I guess if not, this is, <laughs> I've, been, I've been writing too much Golang. Oh no. I've kind of been sucked into the Golang way of doing error handling which is just listen for an error, basically. To load metadata file. All right, so that, I think that makes sense. Uh, metadata stuff loaded successfully. Yeah, and then after that, load metadata. Huh. Oh, and then we can also just have <laughs> this function also return a boolean. So boolean, so if file exists file path. No, let's do let's do it kind of Golang style, <laughs> which is something you never really want to hear. But that's what we're doing. Also, thanks for the follow, user who shall not be named since you have not chatted in chat yet. Uh, turn false. All right, so protect your privacy until you out yourself, <laughs> and then I'll out you. But until that day comes, I shall not. Reveal your name. Uh, all right, so this is Golang style. Boom, boom, boom. Return false. Let's see. What's the alternative to Golang style error handling in Godot? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, Punk FX. Please don't call me daddy. <laughs> Makes me a little uncomfortable. Uh, call me, call me Ducky instead, Uwu. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if there is an alternative to Golang style error handling in Godot, though. Yeah. I suppose you do have to do Golang style since there's no like try catch, right? Yeah. So I sp I should stop complaining about it. Um. Yeah. Thanks for the follow. Always appreciated. 
Uh, let's see. Does not exist. Let's see. File path. There we go. Then return true. Just like that. Yeah. Yay for Golang style error handling. So we have load metadata. If you return true, then we know that we can continue loading stuff. Otherwise, we'll just load in a default metadata file. Uh, thank you for redeeming hydrate, knock. Remember to drink your water. Uh, drink 200 milliliters, as always, from my trusty Nalgene. That was actually 300. Apologies. I drank too much. Man, I've had this Nalgene ever since I was, uh, ever since seventh grade. <laughs> How old was I in seventh grade? That's like 12 years old. And I'm now like closer to 30 than I was 20. <laughs> so this, this Nalgene bottle is super old. How neat. Okay, so... Yeah, 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 if there's no metadata file, then we'll just use the default values. And the default values are just, uh... These, unfortunately. <laughs> That's kind of gross. What do you mean it's kind of gross? I washed the bottle. <laughs> now, if I said I haven't washed my Nalgene bottle since 7th grade, that would be super gross. <laughs> but you know, I, I washed it, uh, probably not enough, but you know, probably like once a month. <laughs> uh, now that I, I say that out loud, and that it sounds even grosser. Is it metal? It is some sort of, uh, plastic material. I don't know if that makes it less gross or more gross. Probably more gross. Yeah, that's why it's gross. Why do I wash it, man? Why is it gross? Are you saying that, like, the gunk gets caked into the plastic? Is that how plastic works? I thought the, the entire reason why the, the Earth is dying is because plastics like this do not deteriorate very, very quickly. So we do a load metadata config. What did I change here? I have no idea what I changed. Uh, save, I guess. It's slow to deteriorate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think my, <laughs> I don't think my plastic has started to deteriorate just yet. It also collects gunk. Well, that's why I clean it. Not enough, but I do clean it. So load config. We're actually gonna get rid of this part. So let's do add a note to do. Take this out once we finish rewriting the config stuff. In my experience at least, well not enough. Hey, you know. <laughs> at least I clean it sometimes. At least I clean it sometimes. I don't know what more you want from me. So, all right, cm dot, what did I call it, load metadata? So if cm load metadata, then we'll do a thing. Probably do like load config, hey, cm, is it not? Oh. My bad. On ready var cm some sort of reference. It will be a load. Uh, hold on. We can find it. Config manager. Dot new. There we go. Beautiful. So if cm load metadata, then we'll then chain the call into cm load config. Whatever the 
the proper path is. Or what if I just hide all of this, right? So if we make this just basically a private function, or intended as a private function anyways. So load metadata, and then load config. Well, now we can, yeah, we can have a setup function, right? So setup here. We'll just do cm setup. Amazing. So config manager dot setup. What this will do is we'll do uh, if load metadata. Then we'll do a thing. Uh, we'll load in the default whatevers from metadata config. So all this works implicitly. That's the nice thing about using a class based approach is that I know all the data will either be there or it won't. So if default config, if metadata config default config, and I forget if the if it's truthy or not. So we're just gonna do this. Because one, I, I can guarantee at least that this will be a string. We try to avoid <laughs> utilizing the, is it the, the billion dollar mistake? Is it the million dollar mistake or the billion dollar mistake? I always forget the name of it. And you know what? The billion, yeah, the billion dollar mistake. Totally knew that, didn't have to almost Google it. <laughs> yeah, we, we initialize this to a default of an empty string. Wait a minute. This doesn't need to return a Boolean though. <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. Well, actually, do if not load metadata. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If not load metadata, then construct a new metadata. Right? So, to do. <laughs> construct new metadata file. Or I guess it's like write new mod metadata file. Write new metadata file. Ah. Uh... Yeah, so we'll do... I'll just grab this again. Really should store it somewhere, but we're not going to do that. Just yet. We'll do... bar metadata file. File new... metadata file. Open file path. And you can see here that I'm just kind of copying what I wrote above. And now we're going to write. Mm. And I suppose what I'll do is um, not load metadata. Yeah, then I can just do. Uh, metadata. Hey. Hold on. <laughs> Confused. Um. Okay, what if I do this? Boom. Metadata, no. Right, so then I don't create a new metadata config here. I just use it implicitly. Mm. And because it's new and I'm not using any nulls, I can just write directly to the file. So save to JSON. Yeah. So I'll do uh, metadata config save to JSON. 
Hmm. Something like this. Metadata. File. Store. 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 Eh. How do you store a dictionary again? <laughs> Uh, how do you store a dictionary again? Uh, save to JSON. All right, I'm I'm blanking on this. I've done this before. I just don't know why I can't think of it right now. Pido store dictionary in file. Save dictionary to file. It's just called to JSON. <laughs> Store string to JSON. Yeah, something like that. So what does to JSON do? Creates a variant var converts a variance variable to JSON text. Used for Blah, blah, blah. Huh, okay. Actually, what does, uh, what does feature view do? <laughs> That's a bit concerning, actually. Am I not using <laughs> to JSON? What does save to JSON do? Save to JSON just creates a dictionary. Because I don't store them inside of a dictionary. I, I guess, yeah, that is true. It is a bit confusing. It should be like exports to JSON or get as JSON or get as dictionary. Yeah, okay, let's, let's do get as dictionary because that's a little less ambiguous. Get as dictionary. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that makes more sense. Get as dictionary. Actually, you could also have save to JSON call to JSON. You know what? That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. I think I still need the dictionary because I need it structured as a JSON uh, dictionary. Yeah, I don't know. Save. As get, uh, what does two JSON do? Two string, or get as JSON, which will give you back a string, and then we'll just do two JSON here. Yeah. Okay. That's that's a lot cleaner. Yeah. No, I mean you don't need it outside this. Uh, just call it two JSON. I'm not. I don't really want to overload it, but yeah, I, I I think I get what you're saying. But we're gonna do it like this, so I don't overload the existing function, right? So get as JSON. Yeah. If not load metadata, just call it two JSON. But there's no existing function. Well, two JSON is the there is a two JSON method and a two JSON global. Yeah, if if oh something about that feels wrong. <laughs> something about that feels wrong. Maybe that's just maybe that's just me, but I, I I'm not a big fan of shadowing if I don't have to, especially if it's a built-in. I think if. I, I like the, the Java way of <laughs> function overloading, unfortunately, where you have to explicitly call override, and then you know that you are basically shadowing. But you're not shadow. Well, 2JSON is a global function, and then there's the 2JSON method. So it's not really shadowing, but it doesn't, 
It feels like I'm shadowing. You're following convention? Is it convention? So there's a global scope method and then a locally scope method that both have the same name. I'm not is I'm not sure if that's convention or not. <laughs> is that convention? Is that is that listed anywhere that I should be doing that? Uh so if default config is empty, then we'll pass in Oh, and I, I'm pretty sure this is actually wrong. Or I, I guess I actually didn't need JSON util. I think to JSON will do whatever I was actually trying to do. So, what a waste writing this thing. <laughs> I haven't tested it though, yet though, so maybe like to JSON actually mangles like the vector four, the color. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, metadata config default config is empty. Then we'll just do this one. Demo demo model path. Demo model path. Alright, so metadata config default config is empty. Metadata config default config a default config is equal to demo model path. Okay. Well, I suppose I could just use where where is this used by the way? Oh this wasn't even me. This was uh from that one pull request. Path. This is so. This is also backwards though. There should be a two JSON interface that you implement, and then two JSON it takes anything that implements two JSON. Is that even possible with GDScript? GDScript does not have interfaces. Yeah. So yeah, if there if there was like the interface pattern, I would use it. <laughs> That makes that makes more sense. However, that that's not how this actually works. Does Python have interfaces, by the way? I don't remember. Python interface. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah, there we go. C sharp. I interface, yeah, isn't basically an interface in Python is just an abstract class. <laughs> I forgot GDScript sucks. Yeah, well, oh, you know, I was playing around with uh, Godot 4 the other day. And let me tell you, GDScript is about the same. <laughs> Although, apparently, oh, no, never mind, you were there when I was snooping on the, 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 do a developer call. It is getting a VM. Uh, so set up. <laughs> you raised my hopes there. Yeah, it's well, it's about you know, it's about the same. It's about the same. No interfaces. You could always implement your own interface, but. Ugh. Crucial for sane programming. Yeah, well. I guess you could always use Godot with C sharp if you wanted to. You could always use Godot with C sharp. Or you know what you could do? Is mix GD scripts in C sharp and then just add in random GD native bindings from all sorts of other languages. Oh baby. <laughs> Just really make it the ultimate spaghetti. Yeah, I mean if you want if you want that kind of type safety then you should probably just use C sharp, right? I prefer the kind of the ability for me to just start typing and then things more or less just kind of work. So Honestly, I'm happy with macro quad for now. Uh, Rust game programming. 
<laughs> you know, I was toying with uh, Ebiton in Golang, and actually, pretty nice, pretty nice. I like it. I kind of like how Golang does interfaces, actually. I don't know if that's a hot take or not. But uh, I've been working with... Let me just type it into chat. Ebiton. If you're familiar with that Golang library. I think most people are fans of Golang. I think Golang is just popular because people uh because it's you know it's the hottest new google language i'd like it too if it wasn't implicit yeah. <laughs> are you talking about like typing isn't rust rust is also implicit typing right it's just and i think in golang it's just the convention is to use implicit typing but you can use explicit Oh, interface implements. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. It is implicit in interfaces. That's true. You do have to depend on the compiler to, to check it for you. Hmm. Actually, this doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> If you don't have a metadata file, then you also do not have a default config file. I just realized that. <laughs> uh, no. Hold on. Metadata path, current model config. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's something that you just kind of get over at some point. Yeah. I think that is, that is one of the, the downsides of Golang is that it offloads a lot of the processing to the compiler. Like, uh, and by what I mean by that is one, the interface thing. And two is that the compiler enforces like, like coding standards, which is kind of bizarre. <laughs> so like you, you, it does not allow you to use unused variables unless you explicitly name them as unused, AKA single underscore, which is weird that that's generally implemented as just like a linting rule. Like in, I think Rust just has it as a linting rule. Whereas Golang stops compilation. I like compilers to enforce things like that. Oh, I, I think that's weird. <laughs> I think it's kind of weird. Uh, I, I do like, I guess to some extent, I like, I like the Rust way of doing it where it just complains every single time. Fujifu. So when you just throw them in a, a print. Oh, I suppose that's true. And then you just have import log into all your files as well. But Golang makes an error if you have an unused var import. Yeah, it should be it should be a very annoying warning, but just a warning. I mean, I do like how the compiler does have coding standards in the compiler. However, you know. It does make development somewhat hard. <laughs> uh, so your default config should not be your demo model path. But it, we should try to load. Wait. Hold on. Default config. What was the design I had for this? So model data which is, uh, it's a dict of, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> dict of, uh, config names to file paths. Yeah found out that instead of commenting things out, I can use if true, do something return to override a function. What do you mean? <laughs> Is that in Rust? Or are we talking about Golang? 
and go. Hmm. What? Everyone always asks what, but not why. Nani? As they might say in your favorite Animu. You know, a function that uses a bunch of imports, but I want to disable it for whatever reason. If I comment out the code, it won't compile because you don't use imports. This is true. Oh. Oh, so you just do like an early return. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's why you set up VS Code to auto import for you. I'm going to be honest. I, I hate it when. Uh, I hate doing that in VS Code. Having it auto manage my imports for me and go. Because sometimes, you know. You know, I'll, I'll be typing along. I'll add an import to like a local package, then press save, and then it removes it because I haven't used the, in the import yet. <laughs> so I'll be like, uh, you know, in Golang, you do something like imports, you know, github.com, blah, blah, package, some file, some lib. Then I'll press save, and then it removes it because I haven't actually used it yet. <laughs> Which is <laughs> really annoying. But then I've also been bitten by that before, right? Because uh, I write Golang at work. And my my development o environment over there, I have nine gigs of RAM and like one, one core. <laughs> so it's very slow and prone to crashing. So like, I'm not saving, I'm not auto-saving constantly. But sometimes, every once in a while, I'll just lose all my work. And it's not even my fault. Languages that need IDEs for a reasonable user experience means the language is crap. Eh. 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 I suppose. I suppose. I suppose. Metadata config. Metadata. Mm. Met default config. Your default config should be. I'm trying to think how this fits in. Go is a language I really want to like since it has so many good ideas. Yeah. Maybe maybe go. <laughs> version two. Oh, thanks for the follow, uh, Hujifu. Much appreciated. I missed it because I haven't looked at my uh, my stream monitor on my far left yet. <laughs> Or I haven't looked at it in a while. All right, so this this is where I'm confused on. Right, right now my current config file looks like. Yeah, what does it look like? It looks like one of these. It's really gross. It's a huge. Whatever. Huge mega JSON. Ooh, jeez. Look at that. <laughs> it, it struggles to even render it. How many lines are there? There's only, yeah, there's only 3,100 lines. I'll follow any Go devs. <laughs> I don't do any Go development on stream because my I'm not very confident in my Go ability, but appreciated. Is there a list that compiles the Go? That's no. That's not that bad. Only 3k. Yeah, only 3k lines. But that's why it doesn't make much sense to keep this as JSON, you know? But that's that's why I'm also trying to restructure it into this format. So you have just the metadata, which contains root level things. Root level data. Uh, so like face tracker. Uh, actually, no. This will only contain the default model to load and default model path, which I think I have saved somewhere. How do I change this to JSON? JSON. JSON. Can you make vectors, colors, serialize as arrays? I'll shorten it a bit. Yeah, I'll probably do it, but uh, that's why I'm rewriting the entire config file system. <laughs> so I don't 
Because because it's it's very fragile right now, anyways, right? Because I know for uh, at least whenever I try to use my presets, they don't work because <laughs> they're broken. But for some people, they do work, and I have no idea why. <laughs> so that's that's why it's kind of tough. That's why it's kind of tough. So I've instead just decided to completely abandon it. Uh, so this is our main setup function. We call setup here, CM setup. We're gonna remove this thing here, which is the old load config function that was just present in the app manager. Um, what should we do if your config default config is empty though? Uh, I think I should just generate a config for you. Well, default config. I suppose this is more like a default model, right? Not... What does this map to? Default model to load. Default... Let's call this default model to load. Default... Model to load. Don't you default to duck? This is true. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that's it. I'm just confused by my own terminology, as usual. The most, uh... It's the, the, the error exists between... Uh... Brain and keyboard? Is that it? <laughs> Default model to load, and I think that also means I need to provide Oh my god, I'm, I'm losing my mind <laughs> This this feels really easy, but I, I, I don't know default Metadata config default config It's not that's not what it's called anymore. It's called default model to load default model to load which is a string. We'll set it equal to app manager, whatever is set in the demo model path. Hmm. Path. <laughs> path, I, I suppose. Yeah, I, I think that does make sense to use the absolute path as opposed to just the model name. Yeah, right, because of this here, model data defaults will load in your model, then we can look at the defaults. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I suppose that makes sense. Right, because con config file names can change. I'm not good at structuring data. Uh, my biggest weakness, data management. Why can't I just have one mega table? <laughs> Which is uh, <laughs> kind of why I'm in this predicament in the first place. Because I did use a mega table. Oh uh, no. Um, and honestly, at this point, I kind of want to just go back to using the mega table, but in a slightly more reasonable fashion. Oh no. Um, so this is the path. And then we load the config. Model loaded. Get current model path. Is current model default? Do you get? Hmm. Set file to load. File to load changed. I'm 
thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking. Usually I talk a bit more, but I'm trying to make sure I do this right. Um. All right. Move we'll this back to here. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We can do this. So this is what we want to set. Because I include this with every single install. This is the default model. That's uh, the duck that you see on screen. Um, so we don't need to use this from the app manager anymore. I'm making a big change. Because I think this has several dependencies somewhat. Mm. And then we want to, we don't want to load your config for that model. We want to just load in your model. Yes. <laughs> then what happens after we load in your model? Hmm. So we do model is loaded. What happens in the GUI layer? Let me see. Oh, you know what? Uh, speaking of GUI, GUI layers, uh, I was playing some Pokemon Go. Finally caught a Gumi. It's a very, very cute, very cute lad. <laughs> kind of a weird way to phrase it, actually, <laughs> upon uh, thinking about it. When do I load in the config, by the way? <laughs> uh, yield model loaded. Okay. Construct views. Um, okay. Model view relies on Oh, jeez. Generate properties? No, probably not. Can we layer? Instance. Call deferred. Add child. What? Setup left, setup right. Oh my god. Uh, so in base view, we do this. So on setup, current model. Oh, okay, so this is where it comes from, right? <laughs> I had to dig for that. Oh no, the, the project's become too large. I can't remember everything anymore. So. I'm just gonna jump again distract myself. This is how this works. Get sidebar config safe. So I use the wrapper to access access um, my config file, right? So this is automatically passed to the setup left and setup right functions inside of each view. Now each view inherits from base view, so we're going full Java. Whenever this callback is, yeah, whenever this callback is triggered, then we call the setup function again. This setup function gets the sidebar config for the currently loaded config, and then resets up uh, each view based off of that model's data. Did that make sense? <laughs> I feel like I said a lot of words, and then I started thinking about it, and I was like, wait a minute. Did I just word salad that? Should I say that again? I'm not sure I could. <laughs> so, this signal comes from App Manager. Model is loaded. This signal, or this callback, is actually called from, I think it's model display screen. Model display screen, right? No, it's called from main screen. Right? Oh, it's not. 
No, it's called from basic model. Right? Basic model. Yeah, it's called from basic model. So whenever the model script is done setting itself up. All right, let's 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 draw this out in paint. So the basic flow is as so. We go from um, let's let's say, well, hold on. Let's just draw a few boxes first, and then we'll move the boxes around as needed. So we have app manager, we have model, we have our GUI, and then we have our views, right? So go app manager. We have model script. We have our GUI layer, and then we have our uh, like just individual view, right? And so the the flow. Oh, and then we also have now our config manager. So our config manager. So the flow goes as such. We'll go app manager. We'll call config manager. Config manager will then load. Do like a just a one. <laughs> That's our first step. Is app manager calls config manager. Config manager finishes loading, uh, which will then broadcast back to app manager. Well, I guess it doesn't broadcast, but app manager just waits for it to load, right? And then app manager talks to, oh geez. <laughs> Some of these are in the wrong position. Um, app manager talks to main display. So let me grab model scripts. We'll move you down here. Move you up here, right? So app manager talks to a main display. Play, I think. Does it? See, I'm set up. Oh no. Main, main screen, not main display. Main display is my usual name for, or I guess it's now my. It's my reusable component I use in my games, but no longer. Hello, ecoder. You've arrived. Arrived at. A pitiful, pivotal time in my life where I'm now questioning all my design choices for <laughs> trying to redo a config file setup. I'm trying to remember how my app works, or I'm I'm trying to remember how this uh, VTuber renderer that I wrote. I've, <laughs> it's been so long and I forgot. Uh, so I'm currently just losing my mind. Yeah, I love pivoting. Well. Not exactly. We haven't pivoted just yet. <laughs> I don't think I will. I think as long as I keep banging my head against the wall, I think I'm going to get it eventually. Uh, and I suppose for legal reasons, that was a figure of speech. I'm not actually banging my head against the wall. So app manager doesn't actually call main screen. But I can guarantee that this goes second. Yeah. I'm always pivoting and never finishing any project. <laughs> well, you can think of it like this, is that I pivoted away from working on this project. This is actually my first project, or I guess my longest running project at this point. And then any other project I work on is more of a pivot, so I don't know. Did we, I think we pivoted if you pivot back to your original project, is that still a pivot? Hmm. Hmm. Wait. Where's the home face? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. That's tricky. It is. I would like to be done with this project uh, soon. 
but I, I, I just need to I just need to figure out how this works. So app manager, config manager, I think main screen waits for app manager, or I can basically guarantee that main screen will be ready after app manager, but we can do this. So this is step three. I guess it kind of waits. App manager will then do <laughs> set file to load. App manager set file to load. File to load changed. Oh my god. <laughs> Clean. Oh, this way, add child. Oh, this way. Oh. Have you tried the uh, Google Summer of Code thing that was made for debugging on VS Code? I have not. Yeah. I, I haven't really paid too much attention to that. I think I saw a news article about the, I think it's like four initiatives that are being funded for Gado, but I haven't actually read it. <laughs> yeah, see, there we go. All right, this link in chat is fine. Let's read it together. Oh, it's five projects. Uh, like in previous years, Godot is participating in the Google Summer Code program for its 2021 edition. We selected five projects back in May, and the five students and their mentors now, or have now been working on their projects for almost two months. We have omitted to announce... What? We omitted... That's not the right word. <laughs> we omitted announcing the projects formally. But this first project is report written by each student will make up for it by giving a direct glimpse into their work. Here are the five projects with links to relevant sections in this post. Implementing a DAP. What's a DAP? DAP debugging? Oh, that's what you're talking about, probably. Pseudo localization to Godot. Softbox dynamics. Graph layout and visual script. Ugh. Visual shader? Maybe. Command palette for editor. Ooh. It's like a protocol. What's a debug adapter protocol? Cool. Uh. Okay. Yeah. This is this is exactly <laughs> my experience. Uh. Blah blah blah. What is that editor theme? <laughs> okay, uh, well, I guess I'll check it out once it's further along, I suppose. But I, I have not uh, actually checked it out yet. I think my my application is unstable enough as it is, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, I see you mainly use VS Code for coding, so this should be useful. Yeah, I use VS Code once the project gets big enough. Yeah, like I, I do enjoy using Godot for everything, but it is nice to just have two files open at once. Potentially three, I suppose, if I were to like do something like this. Look at that. I almost never do that, though. <laughs> I really only need one reference to a file. But yeah. Uh, set file to load. We go back to main screen. Main screen intercepts that. Uh, sometimes I have four files open. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm still... I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do for a new PC. Because I, I do want to get a new PC and stop using a laptop. <laughs> it is a pretty good laptop. Not gonna lie, but streaming on a laptop doesn't give me too much bandwidth for other things. You you can imagine the mess, the mess the project I'm working on is. Yeah, I mean this project is already like a mess as well. <laughs> I like this needs to be refactored, but <laughs> this is absolutely horrible. Right, so what this is. Oh my god. Clean load model. Clean load model display screen. 
So we yield and then free it. Creates another instance of the model display screen. And then set the thing to load. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what I was thinking here. This is one of those things where I was <laughs> probably a little intoxicated when I came up with the design. Uh, this is bad. This is, this is really bad. Sorry, I'm just trying to map it out. So, app manager loads the config, then main screen initializes, pings off of app manager, then pings back to itself, <laughs> and then we have our model display screen. Which is here. Uh, let's move these down so I have a bit more room. So we go from main screen to model display screen. And that's step five in our initialization process. Um, then model display screen calls I think you should use something like diagrams.net. Mm, I probably should, but I'm already too far into <laughs> creating this diagram. So we'll wait on it. If model resource path. You in too deep. Uh, oh, it's this one. I'm familiar with this, yeah. Wasn't this, this used to be called something else? I feel like I've used this during school. <laughs> it's a useful tool to create diagrams, flowcharts, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big fan of creating flowcharts. Used to do that a lot for work. Yeah, draw IO, yeah, that's the tool. Okay, interesting. Is draw IO still here? There? Does it redirect? Oh, app.diagrams.net. Okay, I got baited. <laughs> it is a good tool, though. It is a good tool. I really should be using it, but have you regretted starting to map this out yet? Uh, I'm probably gonna have to save this. Yeah. Uh, this is this is tough. This is tough. So model resource path. Then we. That extension, then we load it, model, instance, then we yield until it's ready. Uh, yes. So this is gross. You know what? I think I might redo this and <laughs> I might do this in the actual flowchart manager. This is, I'm losing my mind. Who wrote this, dude? Oh. Who wrote this? So model scripts does that. Then your model, once it's done doing its ready stuff, right? Then it goes, pings back to app manager. <laughs> Oh god. Pings back to app manager. So that's step seven. At least not crossing arrows yet. <laughs> there we go. We go back to app manager. Then app manager. Uh which where is it? It's um model is loaded. Model is loaded is intercepted by Is intercepted by. Here we go. Hold on. We can do it. So it kind of goes straight through GUI layer. Yeah, actually, yeah. It's not really to the GUI layer. Hold on. We can we can do this. Just grab this. GUI layer doesn't intercept anything by itself. I think. <laughs> Uh, does it? Yeah, it's only properties applied. Okay, so I, I I don't think GUI layer actually needs to exist here, but I think I think 
once I get this mapped out here, then I can bring this into diagrams.net and then we can start reorganizing the flow so it makes more sense. All right, so this is step seven. No, this is step eight. Uh, so each base view calls setup on itself and then setup, oh jeez. <laughs> Um, it, it it goes back. It, it goes it, it goes back to. Oh jeez. <laughs> Something like that. Each one goes back to this. Well, I suppose it'll just go back to config manager. Boom. At this point. Well, config manager is accessed via app manager, so. Okay, so that's nine. <laughs> uh, don't mind the nervous laughter. I know it exa I know exactly what I'm doing. Um, app manager, then goes back to here. So this is not really the current flow. This is just like what the current flow is going to look like once I implement the config manager. Then the config manager goes back. I guess we'll just do this. I'll call that 11. And then the app manager will then go back to the view. Uh, uh, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this is this is pretty much what it's gonna look like once I implement the config manager. Yeah. So previously I was handling configs just all inside of the app manager. Uh, but I'm trying to break it out so the code is more component componentized. Com componentized is that a word? But yeah, that's that's unfortunately what it looks like. Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate. <laughs> it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Let's decide later where I want to put it. My eyes. All right, so let's let's do, let's do this. Uh, okay, so at least we don't need any swim lanes. <laughs> at least we don't need any swim lanes. All right, so. Oh, you know what? We can totally go full swim lane. We can go full consultant with this, and let's let's add swim lanes. <laughs> it's not a flowchart. Uh, where are my swim lanes? Swim lane. Is this a swim lane? Are you a swim lane? Oh, baby, a swim lane. I love it. <laughs> What's the difference between these two? Swim lanes. Yay. We actually don't need layer three. So let's just grab this and delete it. So if we go into here, let's call this, I guess, app. Ooh. And let's call this, well, let's call this user. And let's call this app. Right, and so we're going to be modeling the <laughs> relationship between the user and the app. This is kind of what I do for work, so <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited because this is going to turn into just absolute garbage. So when the actually, I guess we didn't need to 
have the user one, we just needed to have the app flow since there's not too much user interaction yet. How do I make this bigger? Okay. So this is, we have a few things that are pinging off of each other. Actually, this, eh, I suppose this makes sense, right? So we have app. Actually, yeah, it doesn't make any sense to do swim lanes. <laughs> You're lucky. You're lucky this time. So this is app manager. We have our config manager. Uh, don't worry, your PTSD will not be sued. Because <laughs> this gets much worse. Main screen. Or, yeah, is this main screen? Is that what I called it? Yeah, yeah main screen. We have another one called model display screen. Uh, then we have our many views. Many views, and then we have our, just our model by itself. And then, okay. Is that really what it looks like? <laughs> okay, so we do, I don't know, like I'm not gonna go through the the past view, I'm just gonna go through what it's gonna look like now, unfortunately. So we have an arrow here. And this needs to be arrows on both sides. I can't see this, it's too small. Okay, <laughs> sure. Okay, and then we can Text, this is one. That's actually not one. This is one. Text, two. <laughs> so, actually, that doesn't make too much sense to do it like that. Ugh. Delete. None. So, this is one. Right? Then we can go back. Okay. I think I have too many arrows. So this is two. Uh, I need more attachment points, <laughs> unfortunately. And then just main screen happens to do a thing. Then it pings back <laughs> to main screen. Three. Oh no. Four. Uh, then this pings off of this. Five. Uh, then this goes to here. Call this six. And then this goes all the way back to here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, seven. And then yeah, that's that. That does. That is what my diagram looks like. Then we go to here. Eight. And then we go back to we go back to App Manager. Think. Hold on. Nine. <laughs> oh, and then ten. Mm. I need another one. <laughs> Eleven, and then twelve is where we go all the way back to to views. Yeah, so that's what it looks like right now. Uh, that's <laughs> that's pretty good, right? Um, so it's really only the the flow that makes sense are are when we ping off of App Manager. This is engineering. Yeah, this is this is kind of like actual 
programming design. Um, this is like a prime example of what not to do. This is absolutely should not be what you... <laughs> this is not how you should structure your program. Somehow it works, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to extend, right? I need another page. <laughs> Hello, Angla. Logic boards. It's not logic boards. It's just uh, application flow. So when your application flow looks like this, it's this is more or less spaghetti, right? It kind of looks like spaghetti. It only... It doesn't look like spaghetti right now because I've intentionally drawn the lines in such a way that they don't completely spaghettify. Actually, I could do this, right? And then I, I think if I just did, oh, it is, eh. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. What am I doing? Yeah, it's, it's basically spaghetti at this point, right? Because technically, right, views should not be talking directly to your application manager. Yeah, I, this is not what you should be doing. I think, let, let, let me redraw this so I can have a better idea of what I'm doing. So, what should happen, and I'm going to select all the arrows if I can. Boom, no more arrows, goodbye arrows. So, I think this still makes sense, right? See this flow where we have our main screen talk to our model screen? I think that still makes sense. Having your app manager talk to your config manager still makes sense. Right, but then you have other things. So your model screen Actually, where, where does your GUI exist? <laughs> so if I open this, hopefully it doesn't completely break itself. It might break. Ah! Invalid get index default model to load. Oh, right. Hold on. Uh, app manager, let's disable this. So we'll go into app manager. Uh, don't... Just don't do anything with the CM, the config manager, just yet. So we'll wait for it, and then I'll go into debug mode so I can actually check on it. All right, so there we go. Uh, so your app manager, then you have OpenCGD. What does this even look like? Mala display screen. Oh, the GUI layer is actually stored on the main screen. Oh, yeah, because the GUI doesn't change. Yeah. So your main screen has a GUI. This is your GUI, right? So the, the data should flow from main screen to GUI and then from the GUI to each of your views, right? I think that makes sense, probably. Grab everything, move it over a little bit. So your app manager talks to your config manager. So in this flow here, this shouldn't happen, right? I, well, I guess this is fine. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense for the main screen to ping off of app manager, then go back to this, unless it's asking for information, which is kind of what's happening, not really, right? What's happening is that our main screen calls this function here on our app manager, set file to load. Set file to load, all that does is it changes, it changes the current model name and the current model path, and then emits a signal. <laughs> it is the same signal. So it, it basically it's 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 a, this this right here is a useless call since it basically sets itself, <laughs> but has to go through that manager to do it. So it doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, triggers self with 
my signal. That's, yeah, that's essentially what it's doing, yeah. Trigger itself by signal. So we don't want that. What we actually want is for the main screen to talk to that manager. That manager will uh, give it information. So this is basically request um, request model to load. Yeah, that's how it should be working. Request model to load. Then, let me see, five, six, and then we just don't do anything with the GUI, I suppose. Hold on, <laughs> am I building out the same data flow as I did before. <laughs> oh no. That's how you know I am truly lost. I'm <laughs> unable to think of a better flow. Um, right. Sorry. So request model to load. Boom. Start loading model from the model screen. And then the GUI Oh yeah, so this shouldn't happen. Boom. I think the GUI should just receive the message directly. Hmm. That's a hard one, right? So the GUI exists inside of main screen. Huh. Ha 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 ha. So you broadcast out to App Manager. Hear me out. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I realize this is the same design, but hold on. I swear it makes sense. Yes. So, okay. This is broadcast done loading. Okay, and then we go to GUI and then send over the config from the current league, the currently loaded model. Mm, I think that's that's slightly better. And then this one is just nine, which is display config. I think that makes sense. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So I've heard to make this bigger. Oh, that's not how you do it. But basically these are all part of the main screen group, something like that. Yeah, so this is what I want. This is what I currently have, which is <laughs> Just kind of very confusing and hard to follow. Whereas this one is a bit better. So this one, app manager talks to config manager. Config manager talks back. Main screen waits until app manager is ready. App manager is only ready once it's finished these two steps. Main screen requests model to load. App manager gives it back. Main screen creates a new model screen. Model screen creates a new model. Then once model is done loading, broadcast back to app manager, right? Then your app manager talks to your GUI, then your GUI creates all your views, right? I think that makes sense. I think that makes sense. Beautiful. All right, let's do it. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Uh, this is... I don't know. I guess we'll just make it an XML draw IO file. So this is uh, app init flow flow rename. Uh, I guess we'll save to device. Yes. 
Yes. Uh, so, I think... Do I not have any docs? Like, documentation, design docs? Alright. Let's create a new folder. Docs. App. Init. Flow. Yeah, look at that. What is that? Is it a mile note? What is a mile note? This is just a design document, basically. So this is what I currently have. So we can do current, current state, and then desired state. The platform. Oh, this is diagrams.net. I used to know it as draw.io. Uh, because that's actually what I used in school, because <laughs> it's free. Uh, basically just use it like Visio, Microsoft Visio. Yeah, so this is what I have right now. It's very gross. Lots of weird kind of callbacks back and forth. But this makes a bit more sense, right? So we talk to config manager, talk to ma main screen, talks to app manager, does all this stuff. Linearly, then model talks back to app manager. App manager broadcasts over to the GUI, which is contained inside of the main screen. Then the GUI manages all the views. Whereas, I mean, that's more or less what's also happening here, except we go directly to the views. And then this, this flow right here doesn't make any sense, but I've somehow made it work. Right, let's actually save this as well. Ignore this. All right, so this is ha 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 ha. Uh, config, config uh, file design as done as a PNG. <laughs> All right, so that makes sense. Probably. I hope it does. So where does this leave me? Which which part of this diagram am I currently in? So what I need to do first is implement this, and then I'll have to do some refactoring to get to this state, which is a lot cleaner. So right now I'm in, at step two, I think. Or actually, I'm still at step one. Metadata config default model to load. Metadata path, metadata config, that's fine. Current model config is some sort of model data. Okay, so I need to construct this first. So two byte array, not what we want. What we want is, uh, I guess, model config, which is some sort of model config. Is that new? This is some sort of face tracking config. And then feature config, feature config. This is some sort of a feature config dot new. Okay. And then this, these just contain all the little pieces of data that we need. Okay. Suppose all of these would need to have like a two byte array function. Oh, so oh, this is where we can get really, really into like deep inheritance trees. Oh, baby. Uh, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> I, I have reconsidered my, my choice and we can just do this instead. So just copy this function over to each of them. So that it doesn't really matter. Right. 
right? Like I was, I was, what I was gonna do, I was is basically like the the Java style in like interface thing. So I create an interface, then all of these little things, these inner classes implement that interface more or less, which makes this easy, but it doesn't. <laughs> For i for config for i in model config face tracking config and then feature config we'll do results um append array i dot to Byte array. Yes. And then there will just need to be a way to load from byte array afterwards. Yeah, that's going to be the hard part. That's going to be the hard part. Okay. Thank you for redeeming hydrates once again. I do appreciate you burning your points so that you may never, <laughs> you may never be able to redeem the pivot channel point reward. Gotta hydrate all the after all that diagramming. Yeah, the I think unfortunately, like this is the current state that we'll be in. This is what I'm actually implementing right now. The desired state is roughly the same, but it's a bit cleaner because there's less arrows. Because <laughs> there's less back and forth. But oh, that wasn't even uh, that wasn't even 200. Apologies. Remember to drink water, everyone. It's good for you, etc., etc. Okay, so I think this makes sense. Might not be able to parse everything appropriately. Maybe. Maybe I will be able to. I'm not sure. We'll see if this works. I think this will just work though. Yeah, I think this should work. Then these are just method stubs. Hmm. So load metadata. Set up. Um. So that's basically it, right? Default model to load. Yeah, I mean, that's it, right? All right, so we, we call setup. All right, let, let, me, let me think through this one more time. So app manager calls config manager, calls setup, right? And then we're done. Mm-hmm. And then, um, it goes back to app manager. Actually, there's no app, nothing. There's nothing to go back to actually, right? There's no callback, so there's no arrow. Yeah, I guess this one doesn't exist, right? Uh. Yeah, there's, I, yeah, I think there's actually an extra arrow in there because there's no callback back to that manager. That manager just kind of does things. Yeah, so we can get rid of this. This doesn't exist. <laughs> so now we just skip straight to three. Three requests some data from our app manager. So main screen does this, sets file to load. 
We'll just try to work around this for now, and then keep in mind that that design doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so we grab stuff from the at config, so we'll need to change this. So hold on, we'll do to do. Change this to use config manager. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, let's see. Set file to load. How does main screen know which thing to get? Oh, you know what? We can do one of these. Just have a flag. That's like, uh, var has loaded metadata, which is some sort of boolean. False. And so this is only set after setup, da 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 da. Has loaded metadata is equal to true, right? And then here we'll do uh, changes, comma, a ca, comma, how do you spell accommodate? A ca, a como dates, uh, config manager changes. So it's probably going to be something like while app manager uh, cm has loaded metadata. So while not, then we'll do, we'll just do like a yield get tree idle frame. Do I need two Ms? You're one M short of being a uh, a corporate chill, by the way. <laughs> eh. Get it? It's a it's a it's a three M joke. Let's see. Yeah. So basically, we just we just wait until this is done. <laughs> we just wait until it's done loading, basically. And then we can do uh, to do uh, request model to load information, right? Yeah, I think I think that flow makes sense. So instead of doing this, which is add a note remove this. <laughs> so we don't want to call this anymore because this is just pinging off of itself. Usually this is called by another function. I don't know why I chose to structure the code in this way. So remove this. Basically just pull at manager uh, until it's actually loaded all the config file stuff. And I actually don't even know if I need to do this or not, uh, but better safe than sorry. And then request to model to load information, right? So then we'll do something like, uh, we'll do, it's, it probably looks something like app manager, CM, uh, like load config, right? Load config app manager, CM, uh, what was it called? Default model to load. Metadata can, metadata config. Default model to load path. Right? 
Yeah. Request model to load information. I think this makes sense. So we go through the config manager every single time. So, and uh, remember that this code is only called once, so I don't feel too bad about this. This is just the initialization stuff. Yeah. So we load the config, and then if no config exists, then we'll just create a new config. All right, so we'll do roughly the same thing as here. So we'll do var directory directory.new, if not dar file exists. Uh, don't have the file path just yet. So let's do var file path. Uh, actually, I think we just have, yeah, actually we just have the path, Never mind. <laughs> we, can, we can depend on the path existing, so that's fine. If not dir file exists path, then we'll do app manager log log message does not exist. Little bit of string formatting. Path, there we go. Load config. Wait, so what am I doing with load config, by the way? <laughs> uh, so this loads you, all this should do is load your config. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the idea is that I wanna to try to get rid of set file to load, right? Um, change this to use config manager. Hmm. So maybe I don't want to do this. Maybe I want to do this back into set file to load instead. So we're still roughly using the same thing. I'm thinking. <laughs> um, um, uh, yeah, set file to load. Yes. So the, the biggest thing that has changed is that we're no longer using this uh, default model path thing. We're no longer doing that. Instead, set file to load. I think we can get rid of these. And all this app config stuff can also be removed. Yes, maybe. So what, what am I what am I doing with load config by the way? <laughs> so if, if the directory does not exist, then we do bum bum bum, and then probably just creates a new current model config. So that's, that's what I should be doing, is I should be trying to manipulate this current model config inside of load config. Or maybe it'll just be like a new config, right? So, model config is equal to model config dot new. Okay. All right, so if there is no file, then we do an early return, and then we just use the basic, or the default configs, which should just be empty data. So model config should more or less correspond to everything that's stored here. Yes, mapped bones. Mapped bones is a dictionary. Oh, this is gonna be so much work. <laughs> I'm excited. Let me 
Are you excited? I'm excited. Oh no. Okay, so that's an array. Uh, okay. Var. Mapped bones. Some sort of array. Beautiful. Let me know if you like where my head is at. <laughs> Full light array. Yeah, no, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's gonna make these all extend serializable, but that's just, that's a bit too much. That's a bit too much. <laughs> it might be fun to break this out into its own kind of like separate Godot project, but we'll do that later, once we actually have this implementation working. So we're serializing everything to bytes because I do want to save your save data as just like a, an image. Because uh, I find it interesting, but also this is a good opportunity to clean up the entire data flow of the entire application. So that's tough. Uh, map config. So you have your mapped bones. What other things do you have? Initial bone state, initial properties. Eh, no. Oh, I mean, what what other things do I have here? So, right. Dun 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 dun. Don't need any of these. I think I can actually grab some of the data from pose as well. And also like the model position and all that. Right, like none of these really need to be saved under model because of how I have kind of changed the uh, model data layout. So I think one problem of the new system is that there's going to be repeated fields, but that's kind of just how save data works <laughs> or config data works. So existing model fields, and then pose fields. Okay, so let me see. Pose view. Luckily, with how I structured each view, it's very easy to see how things are saved because I just have a save function that contains everything that is saved. Oh baby. So left, get bones. Bone name, JSON util, transform to dictionary. Okay. Okay. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. Bone name. Oh no, this is like bone transforms, right? <laughs> Yeah, these are these are pretty much just bone transforms. Mm. Yeah, var bone transforms, which is some sort of dictionary, some sort of mega dictionary. Okay. Left mapped bones. What is mapped bones? What what is stored inside of mapped bones? Mapped bones. Mapped bones. I think mapped bones. Current model, get map bones. Hmm. Or is basic model? Basic. Wait. Basic model. Um. Mapped bones. Get map bones. Is a dictionary of all bones. Okay, it's just a dictionary of bone names to true or false. Okay. So this is string to boolean. Okay. So mapped bones. Wait. What? Map 
Select bones. That's an array. Config. That's bones. What? <laughs> what? Huh? That's bone values, sure. Matt's bones is get map bones, left container. If B is... Oh, that's not, that's not what that is at all. Okay, so this is just like a list of bones that should be tracked. So that's like a string, right? Bones that should be tracked, and then this is... I think this is just bone name to bone transform, right? Bone name, yeah, this is bone name to bone transform. So this is string to transform. Oh, geez. Um, and then here you have your var model transform which is some sort of transform amazing no that's not how you do transforms isn't it how you do a transform no is it transform.new transform Am I crazy? Right? Yeah? Um, then model parent transform. Yeah. Model parent transform. Which is also just an empty transform. Okay. And that's, that's pretty much all the data that we need to store in your model config, right? So it's just all your bones all your map bones, all the transforms of your bones, which basically just means your model pose. So by default, most models should come either T-posed or A-posed, but then inside the application, you can change it to be whatever you want. So that's what bone transforms uh, is tracking. Mapped bones, all that tracks are the specific bones that are being face tracked and then moved. So, for example, on my current model, the duck, the only bone that is being tracked, aka the only mapped bone, is the head bone. <laughs> it's called the head bone. Your head bone, not the skull, because we don't... It's not actually like a, a real human bone. It's just a, a model bone. Model transform, and then model parent transform. So, your model can spin, and then your model parents can be moved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And then I'll just need to find a way to turn these transforms into uh, into bytes. I wonder how do you parse a transform from bytes? Hmm. I'll need to have like an algorithm for this, like two byte array from byte array. Face tracking config is pretty much all the stuff that was inside of model view, but on the right side. Oh, that's gonna be tough. <laughs> that's gonna be tough. So let me see. We have here... Bone movement damps. So we have var translation damp, which is some sort of float. I think we're just gonna use these as the defaults. Rotation damp, some sort of float. Var additional bone damp, which is some sort of float once again. 0 0.3, so it's the same damp, I think. Model options, don't know why there's no, <laughs> there's no field there. I think model options might only be there for VRM models, so I'll need to recheck that. Our tracking options. So this is like defining the head bone. 
which is some sort of string. So we'll default it to head, and then it can be changed later. Var apply translation, some sort of bool, false, var apply rotation, some sort of bool, and true. And then finally, interpolation options, which is like interpolate model, bool, true, and then var interpolation rates, which is some sort of float. Interpolate at point 0.1. Okay. So... I think that's fine. And that... Yeah, that... That matches with this. And then the last thing is just the feature view. And then the preset view doesn't need to be managed because each one of these model datas is basically a preset at this point. So it's no longer a separate piece of data that I need to think about storing. It's just, it just works now, now that I have the idea of a, a metadata file, in addition to just the regular files. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So let's go here. Get status, get add all. I'll commit it. So this will be start, or I guess add config manager starts refactoring uh, config stuff <laughs> config stuff eh, git push new origin app config refactor oh baby stuff is the technical term of course for things of a great multitude that I cannot describe with one word. All right. Well, it is 11 p.m., so I think I'm going to be signing off now. Thanks for tuning in. I will be live uh, Tuesday from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, working through this <laughs> so that I can, uh, we can finally move on to newer and better things uh so yeah uh peep the discord peep the socials i don't know all the usual stuff give me a follow if you haven't already and i will see you later goodbye knock